dear friends i am back with the second episode of classics in optimization classic books actually the first one that we had spoken about is uh, the famous one called nonlinear programming by olvi mangasarian which was published in 1969 and now we tell you about a book which should be in the desk of any optimizer what they sold and this book is con called convex analysis by another by the legendary ralph tyrell rockefeller also known among his colleagues as terry rockefeller convex analysis that the book that you see in my hand is a 1994 issue of the 1970 edition of this book it was republished in the as the princeton uh, landmarks in mathematics this is one of the greatest works in mathematics or applied mathematics or whatever you want to say uh, this is a work which uh, actually holds huge importance in optimization it it is applied in many other areas like finance the great thing about the work is that the whole thing is done in finite dimensions but it is one of the most original work ever in the in in modern mathematics and terry rockefeller has grown in, into a legend and he is a kind of an empire builder who kept on building this whole edifice of convex analysis and uh, modern optimization a lot of good things good ideas came to him first so this book is a must but it is also important to remember that this is not a cover to cover book it's not that you start reading like a novel and you understand everything and go to the end it's it's not like that this book is a book to reach out for help when you are working on some issues your research in optimization and you are stuck on an issue of a certain issue of convexity about some about convex functions sets or their interrelations there you come to this book have a look through its various pages various results and try to connect things which might help you and suddenly you see an idea emerges and you create that connection that you require in your research it's surprising that though this book is written in 1970 most of our research efforts when we try to think do things about convexity seems to come out from connecting results in this book it's amazing reading it is hard i would say because you know you once you read one theorem you read to refer back to theorems before it so everything is well arranged but this is not a book you can be taught as a text also it's it's a book for researcher but it is needed by every researcher ralph tyrell rockefeller is now 85 years old still active still working at the deep fundamental levels about deep and and on deep questions on optimization for example i had one of his latest lectures on this one world optimization series we are all stuck at home because of covid 19 we are uh, just we can webinars and one in one of his latest lectures he was looking at um, the nature of the functions around the local minimizer how can we show how augmented lagrangians play a role in showing the um, strict convex nature of functions around a local minimizer so let me tell you uh, this book maybe in our days even freely downloadable uh, let me tell you this book which my brother gifted me actually and uh, i can show you i have terry's uh, signature i took it from him when i met him last in 2017 in australia you can you can see it very clearly now here uh, let me just tell you what are there in this book what are the main uh, chapters so there is part 1 which has basic concepts which consists of affine uh, talks about affine sets convex sets algebra of convex sets convex functions and various functional operations then comes the topological property of convex set which talks about relative integer every convex set in finite dimension has a relative integer for example this page that you see here in three dimensions does not have an integer because an integer three dimension means that you should have a ball here a spherical ball which should be contained in the set if a, around a point if that point has to be an interior point so you have to find a ball 
which has to be contained in the set. But no ball in R, R3, three dimension would be contained in this two dimensional set. But if you look at it as a two dimensional set, then it has an interior. So if you take the intersection of the ball with this set, then you have another two dimensional ball which lies within this set. And that gives you the idea of a relative interior. And that is a very, very key concept. Every finite dimensional convex set has a relative interior. So then it talks about recession cones, which talks about unbounded sets. Continuity of convex functions is an important topological property. Then comes duality correspondences. It talks about duality correspondences. It links with you two facets. There are the, in any space, there is a primal facet and a dual facet. That dual facets are actually nothing but linear operators working on, operating on that space. Linear functionals actually. But here essentially it talks about separation theorem between convex sets. And if anyone in, interested, one can go into my uh, channel and can see certain lectures on separation uh, of convex sets, separation theorems. And then talks about a very important concept called conjugate of con convex function. So it essentially this is a relation, is an interrelation going back and forth between a convex set and convex function. Then it comes about uh, representation of convex sets through equalities and inequalities like polyhedral sets. It talks about the famous Carrier theory theorem of linear algebra. It talks about Halley's system of inequalities and many, many things which are very, then it talks about essentially convex and linear inequalities, which are basically theorems of the alternative. That is, there are two systems of inequalities. Both of them cannot have the solution at the same time. And it talks about the differential theory. It talks about differential derivatives and subgradients. It's very important to know that convex functions do not have a derivative everywhere. Though it has it at most places, the set of points where it doesn't have a derivative forms a set of measure zero. But most of the practical cases, if it doesn't have a derivative, will have it in only few finite number of points. And unfortunately, the minimizer lies the most in generically at those at a point where the derivative is not there. Fx equal to absolute value of x is a prototype example which is given everywhere that at x equal to 0, the function is not differentiable. This is a convex function. So the epigraph is convex and the minimizer lies there. Okay. So it talks about differential continuity and monotonicity. Here it talks about uh, uh, kind of an issue called legendre, legendre transformation. We will not get into the details. It, it talks about certain important classes of functions like uh, uh, essentially, uh, I am just forgetting the term. Uh, maybe I should have a look. There, there is a class of functions called uh, wait a bit. Maybe it's a good idea to have a Look, it's a, it's a class of function called uh, just a moment. Huh. So there's a class of functions which is called Logendre function. So if they talk about a function called essentially smooth function an essentially strictly convex function. These sometimes ha are, have very important bearings on developing algorithms. And it has been done in very recent years. For example, developing proximal gradient algorithms, uh, when we are talking about, for example, using Bregman, using non-Euclidean distances, using something called Bregman distance functions, there the inducing fun convex function is assumed to be a Legendre function, which is kind of a function which has these properties like essentially strict and essentially smooth and all those things. So we will not get into the details, but then after all this comes the famous thing that we all want to know, the constraint extremum problems. This extremum is actually a Russian term because Rockefeller does has a lot of Russian connections and this extremum term uh, is a Russian term. Russians always say that we are talking about the theory of extremal problems rather than maximization or minimization. So here in this chapter, or part six in this book, so the, every part has few chapters. It talks about the minimum of a convex function, ordinary convex program and Lagrange multipliers, pi function and generalized convex functions, Fenchel duality theorem, maximum of a convex function, which is a hard problem. Then he comes to talk about saddle functions and minimax theory. 
See what Rockefeller has told me that in optimization, it is always good to think in terms of saddle functions. In the sense, it is always good to think in the primal dual mode rather than just in the primal mode or in the dual mode. So I hope you uh, would have a look at this book. Those are you who are young optimizers coming into the subject. And for the experienced optimizers, if anyone who, is, who happens to see this will uh, know what I am talking about in such an excited fashion. So thank you very much.